Onyaba, at the 1950 Badon General Conference, said the following. If you have all decided that the North is for Northerners, the West is for Westerners, and the East is for Easterners, what would belong to Nigeria? I want you to also put that at the back of your mind because if by restructuring you say, let's go back to East for Easterners, West for Westerners, and not for Northerners, what and where would Nigeria be? Okay? Now, when the military struck in 1966, the guys came to the conclusion, and we all agreed, that the greatest problem this country faced was the problem of extreme regionalism. And therefore, we needed to, you know, um, strengthen that center. Who were the chief advocates of a strong center? Ethnic minorities because they were oppressed in the regions and they knew that they needed a counterweight to those dominant majorities in the regions. At the time, the minorities even said, we have a problem with a police force that is local and regional. They complained to the willing minorities commission and they said, you know what, we'll make the police force a federal force. That's the origin of the police force. Okay? So the military said that region centered federal trajectory is not going to help us as a country. We need to get back. And so they gave us a nation centered trajectory. Remember what Carl Frederick said about changing instrumentalities? I hope you have that at the back of your mind. So, as it demands change, you need to change the instrumentalities. And we were all for national unity. We fought a civil war, came out of the civil war, and everything we wanted to do was to extend our cohesion. So we had unity colleges, federal government colleges. We introduced NYSC. And by 1979, we had the federal character principle. We even said, and the military said, in order for us to consolidate the gains of nationhood, we should ditch the parliamentary system and adopt a presidential system. Because it's the one that is more capable of holding the country together. And we did. Today, there are people who say, we have never had the opportunity to debate and to even decide the terms and conditions of our existence as a country. That's a lie. That's a lie. In 1950, we had the Badon General Conference. And as a prelude to that conference, in preparation for the McPherson Constitution of 1951, we had, at the local village level, at the regional level, at the provincial level, and finally at the national conference level, the question was asked, what do you want? A unitary system, a federal system, or a confederal system. Most of us voted for a federal system. When the military was going to write a constitution, they had a technicist approach to writing constitutions. So they brought all the experts together and had a constitution drafting committee and said to all the eggheads there, very representative, give us a new constitution. And the CDC invited memoranda from all members of the public, citizens, organized groups, and so on. And we followed that up with a constituent assembly that was largely elected. And people went there and knocked that constitution in shape. That's our 1979 constitution, which today we say was imposed by the military. OK? The point is. We ourselves agreed with the military that we needed to be more united than ever before. And therefore, we embraced these things. We saluted federal character. We saluted the creation of more states. We saluted you know, the emergence of local government as a thought here of our federal system. But somewhere along the line, something gave way. 
If we're going to continue to be the kind of federal system that we were in the First Republic, then of course there was going to be a contradiction. And that contradiction was resolved by the DKF panel report in 1976. Prior to that time, you couldn't get a new state in Nigeria if one, you didn't pass the viability test, and two, the other members of this federation didn't concur that we could create it. So in other words, there was something like a mutual veto because in order to create a new state in the country, there had to be a concurrence of you know, the constituent units. Irikefe said, our new federal arrangement is fundamentally different from the region-centered trajectory. In the region-centered trajectory, every constituent unit needed to be viable in order for it to exercise its autonomy. But that in the nation-centered trajectory, only the federal government, federal needed, government to be needed to be viable. In other words, Irikefe was saying, our states and our local governments are no longer constituent units of a proper going federal system. They would now become distribution outlets and administrative agencies of the federal government. Now, I'm sure many of us will say, but that's not federalism. That is also federalism. That is also federalism. Look, in the 21st century, it is no longer possible to have any country without a strong central government. That's what the global politics says. Even the EU is not so weak that it is, you know, so dependent on either Denmark or on France or whatever. The whole point about strengthening subunits and so on is to say, let the federal government be strong. Let the constituent units be strong also. Okay? Now, so, we went on with the military. But at some point, that trajectory of federalism overreached itself. And then we started to rethink, to review that process. And we started to say, look, the federal government is not able to give to everyone what everyone needs. The federal government is overreaching itself. There's too much government. And all of us now depend on that oil. We should review it. And that's when we had these views on restructuring again. Let me tell us. Restructuring is an integral part of the federal process. The question is, what triggers it? The restructure in America, the restructure in Canada, the restructure in Australia, the restructure in Brazil, the restructure everywhere. But what triggers it in our peculiar situation? We have emphasized the politics of federalism over every other aspect of benefit of federalism. In 1962, Professor Essien Udom looked at our politicians and he said, you know what? They are playing the politics without vision. Now, politics is good. It's very fundamental to the things we do. But politics doesn't end with politics. That is why, in the spirit of federalism, it is expected that the levels of government complement themselves and cooperate. There is no dualism. Every tier of government impacts on citizens simultaneously and concurrently. That's the whole purpose, you know, that we must work together. But anyway, having come to the conclusion that our region-centered trajectory appeared to be a little more appropriate for the changing demands, we had new perspectives new lines of thought. That's where we are today. There are people who are saying, we need to redig. We, we need to get back to some of those questions and answer them. For Christ's sake, political correctness doesn't mean that only one view is correct. If for a federal bargain, you have a multiplicity of views, let a thousand flowers blossom. Look, when you're starting a federal system, Nobody knows 
that oil is going to become the, the thing. And nobody knows where oil is going to be located. Yesterday it was cocoa, it was rubber, it was oil palm. Today it is oil. Who knows tomorrow where it will be? When those things change, we will need to restructure again. <laughs> Now, let me begin to close. The theory of games, games, we have games theory. We all play games, all of us. I'm sure you, Pat, you play games, play games. We shagun. And when we play games, we have one objective is to win, isn't it? Nobody plays a game to lose. I'm sure Shego Adegwabi can also tell us that. You play to win. So, we have worked this into a theory of bargaining and of negotiation, games theory. It says you can have two or more players Every player desires to win, but players must play by the rules. They are rules of the game, okay? And the outcomes are numerous. You can have a zero-sum outcome where the winner takes it all. You can have a win-win outcome. We all share. You can have an end-sum outcome. Some win more, some lose less, and so on. All of these things are part of the game that we play.